Mr. Gustafson, please bring forth your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is my privilege to be here before you today to present my client for your consideration. We will be focusing on one aspect of my client so that you can see with your own eyes the merits and flaws of my character so that you can determine for yourself if you would also like to consider my client for your own interests. My client will serve as the first witness, if you prefer, a witness of character. Hello ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Today we're going a bit more casual for a character witness uh, for the simple reason that I am mostly putting this out to pitch my own game as it were. Uh, today we are not looking at someone else's work and tracking their progress throughout their game development and life of a particular game. This game has not yet really been born, so, but it is about to be. I thought it would be a good idea to do this character witness, so perhaps you not only see the, uh, the, the essence of the game itself, but also a little bit of the rationale that went behind some of the decisions and design, which is certainly one of the subjects of interest in uh, my character witnesses. In this, we are going to be making a character for the upcoming ManyQuest game, and I thought I would just show how the most basic version of Dice File handles character creation. So, with that being said, here we go. Now, here we have my Dice File character sheet um, that I cobbled together very quickly. It's a useful character sheet, um, but as you can see, it's not very intricate for a good reason. This, this is not a very exas exacting, crunch-heavy game. It's a game more that celebrates probabilities and possibilities, rather, and storytelling over, uh, you know, richly detailed what's the tactical advantage of this weapon over this weapon, and so on and so forth. So, we are making uh, Dirk Casterly, uh, my bard character, for uh, my mini quest game. And I thought I would have some fun, because I haven't done uh, calligraphy in a while, so uh, we will be... Uh, Player name is ManyQuest. Uh, character concept. Um, hapless Bard. Character information. We'll develop that as we go. So, uh, basically there's only a few things that we have to do for character creation. We have the concept, Hapless Bard. As long as we roleplay in character, uh, we'll get rewarded for that and can advance our character more quickly if the viewers who give the directions for what Dirk is going to do think to stick in character of a Hapless Bard. But, for his basic dice pool, skills, abilities, and traits, we need to come up with his specialty. What does Dirk do better than anything else? Uh, there's a number of things, you know, he has a little bit of magic here and there. He has um, some musical ability. Uh, not a great deal, he's more of a talker. But uh, in this case, we really should come up with something that he is best at, which is probably... Um, <laughs> his ability to... Hmm, would you consider him to be excessively charming? Uh, he can certainly change his, his outlook and demeanor based on where he's at, so that he's, uh, he's not... He's more of a social chameleon, being able to be different things. When he's at a common drinking house, he can be kind of coarser and, and you know, make his living by telling jokes. If he's someplace where more courtly manners are required, um, then he would have, have other advantages. So we'll just say, um, as far as a skill goes, uh, his ability to adopt different mannerisms and skills and things, um, just call that socializing. Notice I'm not referring to any kind of a book or anything, for that matter. Um, the entirety of the book of Dice File is this binder. 
it's not pretty, it's not printed out. It's sprawled between several spiral notebooks and uh, some character sheets from playtesting and the actual uh, printed notes that I have had, I guess would probably be best summed up with uh, these notes, which I made for Dice File Fantasy, the first game that I actually ran in public, um, which had character sheets and the basics for the game itself, which um, relatively straightforward. The major thing was there was no defined traits or abilities. My players basically made up what they thought, which was kind of fun because they tested my service. One of them wanted to make an ogre princess who had a pack of goblins running around. Her gear was actually the goblins themselves. So that was kind of fun. Um, so secondary abilities. This would probably be easier. Uh, he knows how to fight a little bit and he will start out with a sword. So we'll have swords as a skill. Swords. Um, humor. Uh, his ability to entertain people and disarm them using humor, as he demonstrated with his uh, uh, stand up routine. And. Hmm. Well, you're not a really good bard if you can't persuade people to do to see things your way. His socializing is mingling with other people and convincing them that he's one of them. Um, I suppose it would probably be good for him to also have a general skill of lore, though. Uh, lore and history, I think. All right. So those will be his starting abilities. Uh, he will hopefully survive to get more, but for the present, that's what we're going to go with. And those are the things that are that you can do in permanent ink. The rest we will use pencil for because that may change on this character sheet as we go. Gear can be attained and lost. Uh, skill levels hopefully will eventually rise, so uh, his die code for socializing is D8. Swords, D6. Humor, D6. And lore and history, D6. All right, his max die pool for a starting character. He starts out with one eight-sided die, two six-sided die, and three four-sided dice. So, his gear and gear dice. He is going to start out with a poor quality sword. You'll see it uh, as that goes on. Hello, Magic. Poor quality short sword. Which is at a D4. It's Basically, like a quality-wise, it's probably about equivalent to a dagger. A little longer, but not a very impressive weapon. Uh, also, no, no, no magic. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, he's also going to start out with a backpack. Uh, as far as assisting him in carrying burdens over a distance, that's actually a D6 because it's a lot more efficient than carrying things in a sack. You carry the weight on your shoulders, it's better distributed, so uh, that's against tests of endurance to resist fatigue over you know, carrying a burden for a travel. If it fits in the backpack, um, that will help him out quite a bit. Stay back, Magic. All right, uh, he also will get to start out with uh, food. And that is a rated at D4. It's not a full meal, but it can be used for, say, bribing others or resisting the effects of hunger or poisons in the case of ingested alcohol. It can help to defray that. And what's the other piece of gear? Oh, yes, he has his flute. Which, again, not... 
all that impressive in quality. It isn't only rated at a D4. It is just a hollow bamboo flute. Um, so that is uh, where his gear will start out at. So if we are going to, you know, to finish the character, we would need dice. So opening up my dice bag, these would be the dice that I would have for this character. I would have an eight-sided die in his basic die pool. I would have two six-sided dice in his basic dice pool. I would have three four-sided dice in his basic dice pool. For his gear dice, he would have a D6 and a D4. grab a d4 for that. Thought I had enough dice, but maybe I don't. Let's see. So many dice littering this place. Just need one simple four-sided die. And there we go. One four-sided die and one six-sided die. This character is complete. <laughs> this is everything that I need. Uh, if I'm going to play this game, uh, I basically take my turn. The story weaver tells me the scenario I come up with what I want to do regarding that scenario. Uh, say, for instance, I'm trying to ingratiate myself with the Thieves' Guild. I want to try to use my socializing skill to get into the Thieves' Guild. At the same time, the rest of the group may be doing something else. So I would use, if I really want to make this attempt, I can use any die from my eight-sided die, my six-sided dice, to my four-sided dice. I would use that plus... If I wanted to, say, try to get in by appearing to be an entertainer and using my flute um, to show off my skills, I might use my flute, my D4. And to use these abilities, I would, in my turn, uh, if I can't think of anything else, I would shortly narrate it. I will go up to the door of the Thieves' Guild and, with my flute, try to impress the the door warden so that he lets me inside so that I can have access to their guild. So I would roll these dice. I got a three on the eight-sided die. I have a four on the four-sided die. I would use the four because it is a higher number. I impress them with my flute skills. Uh, because I rolled maximum on that die, it actually gives me a plus one, so I have a five in my skill to get through. If the guard is bored and they're not really on alert or anything like that, that's almost certainly going to be enough to get me through. He liked the fact that I have a flute and he's going to let me in to entertain people, which is, which is excellent. My eight-sided die would go into my spent dice pool. My four-sided die would go back into my gear dice pool. I would have uh, fewer dice to use until the scene is over and refreshes and my spent dice come back. Uh, but I still have this potential left to use, so I could still use swords, humor, or lore and history at my D6, which has not gone down at all. Or I could try just about anything with the D4, the default, for someone who's not trained. And if I can somehow work my gear into it, I would still be able to use my gear dice for that. If it's a fight, for instance, I could use my six-sided die for my sword skill, and my four-sided die for the short sword and attempt to defend myself. Uh, say I'm you know, trying to get in a quick stab. I rolled a, ooh, a six. That's, my skill is excellent. Uh, so that would be a seven on that. I rolled a three for my sword, but that isn't more than the six. So I'd have a seven, which is good enough to probably land a blow on somebody unless they rolled really well for defense. So this is dice file, effectively. And that is the core of how the game goes. So, uh, now that we've gone there, 
back to me. So that is Dice File. At its heart, it is a very simple set of rules that employ as many dice as are prudent for the level of play that you're going to be at. And um, it includes several levels of customization built into the game. You choose what lens you're going to play at. If you're going to play with super giant death mecha robots, you're going to still be using the four-sided die, six-sided die, eight-sided die, ten-sided die, twelve-sided die stage. It's just that those are going to mean completely different things. Are they your megawatt death kill cannons for those robots? Or are they a bow and arrow for a goblin? It all depends on the lens that you're going to use, but the system holds up uh, for each different lens. As far as what's allowed within your game, if you're a story weaver who doesn't give any direction to your players and you give them freedom to do whatever they want, within a particular lens, you could create a space marine on the one side with, uh, you know, all of the, you know, some, some armor and a weapon and stuff playing right alongside of a wizard who has access to magic and other things. Um, as completely unguided, it almost becomes similar to a game like Fate, which is governed by its aspects and things. This has a different mechanic, but you can play completely open. On the other hand, if you put a filter on the game, that is, the story weaver uh, clamps down and defines what are the allowed abilities, what are the allowed skills, what traits are commonly used, you suddenly have a much more guided system, which is how I kind of intend to release Dice File. It's going to have several released filters for things like space and fantasy and and so on and so forth. So, uh, as far as how the game uh, runs, uh, combat works uh, with exchange die rolls. And as you exert yourself through a scene, attacking, defending, doing different things, you're losing dice out of your dice pool and closing down what you're able to continue to do in the scene until it refreshes and everybody gets their potential back. Um, a scene can be anything from you get into town, now what? And the story weaver may give everybody an hour to do the different things they want to do. So a person who has a, a pool and they want to do a lot of different things might spend dice to use their skills to do different things in the town. Other, per, other persons without those kind of skills might just say, I'm just going to go to an inn or I'm just going to go and, you know, look look for a place to rest, something like that. Uh, it's, it's open enough that anybody can play it at the level that they want to. It is not a finely tuned, detailed game. It doesn't pretend to have a lot of crunch. The difference between a long bow and a short bow really isn't going to be all that great in reference for this game. It's mostly going to be about ranges, primarily, and the scope of where combats usually happen in a role-playing game. So you're not using, a, typically, a war bow that you can fire hundreds of yards away. Most of your fights are going to be more intimate, so that a bow is going to be something you just knock an arrow to, aim, pull back, and let rip. And then your, your physicality is going to determine more on that. But it's a game that also uh, rewards higher levels of skill giving you access to a deeper die pool and allowing you to still be as effective as perhaps somebody who gets by because of their gear and not a lot of potential. There is a kind of a balance that's allowed in this game for that reason. Of course, creating a character doesn't show you all the little intricate details about things like pushing and, and the drama die and things like that, but the mechanics are the essential things that are, are going to be outlined here. How to create the character, how to lay out how your attributes and skills end up being, uh, and we didn't really go over the difference between an attribute and a skill because in this context it's really not that important. Um, for the most part, all of the things that we chose were going to be skills. Um, for the most part, uh, Dirk is not an outwardly impressive person. He doesn't have massive strength that he is going to, you know, uh, step up and do great feats of strength. He, while he has some skills at 
humor and uh, grifting through uh, through groups with his socializing, he is not himself amazingly charismatic to the point where he just walks in and can bend the entire room to his whim. That's something he's just not at. Uh, he covers instead by his skills that he has learned. Um, skills are a bit easier to uh, to elevate and raise, which can be useful. Um, so, you know, it's those are things that he can work on as he goes through. Just like uh, in, in a lot of games where, you know, you have, you track experience. Well, because you're using a, a fairly simple system that only has primarily uh, a few different levels of skill. It also doesn't get too detailed and bogged down with you know, how many character points or, or how much of an experience total. You get advancement points periodically as you do well and as you stick to playing out your character. Um, that, those are bonuses that are given on top of just succeeding and surviving different challenges. So, All in all, um, I hope this gets you excited about uh, many quests. This is the character that we will be playing and uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm Rob. Thank you very much for joining me and this little impromptu character witness and uh, look forward to seeing you in many quests. Thanks and farewell.